yes you can through this field of trees Tom and Chris join me from the editors here in Australia for the very first time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it took us a little while to get here, though. Why did it take you so long? I don't really know. It's it was far it? away. Yeah, it's a long <laughs> way away. Not that far away, really. Feels it when you're on the plane. Yeah. But I don't know, we were just stupidly busy and things get put in and we should have come on the last trip. We didn't, but we're here now. We're here now. You're here now. And listening to your second album, and End Has a Start, uh, we all know the, the, the single uh, Smokers Outside a Hospital Door, which is something I've seen in my time and I've always been quite shocked. But uh, a lot of the, the lyrics are quite confronting, a, a little dark, but how do you mm. make such sadness sound so good? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the lyrics do kind of stem from serious things and this one does kind of focus on on a few songs, death and things coming to an end. And I don't know, we, we love exciting rock music. We like, you know, things that has a pulse and make you know, songs that people can sing or make you want to dance. You know, that's what we try and do, get that vibrancy and urgency into it, even though it does cover things that on the surface are kind of, you know, serious. It doesn't mean it can't make you feel alive and uplifting. I Glastonbury. Did you guys yeah. ever experience Glastonbury yeah, nice as punters, though? I did. I grew up just, you know, an hour's driveway. So when I was 17, 18, 19, that's where I went and hung out and, uh, you know, watched bands. So, yeah, it's a magic festival. I mean, all festivals have their own kind of unique personalities, and Glastonbury's kind of the, the grandmother of them all. And what we do you remember of seeing of Glastonbury as a 17-year-old? I mean, I, I would spin out. Radiohead. 97, okay. headlining. Just changed me. Yeah, that's the, the one, I mean, I've sort of saw R.E.M. there, a spiritualised play, and just, yeah, it was good stuff. Who you idolise? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what did it feel like being up there performing where, you know, the same sort of stages that you'd yeah, seen yeah. in the past? Felt good. We, you know, we did the other stage, which is the, the second stage. It's an outdoor stage, so we were playing uh, half nine at night, where we started, and it got dark during our set. Everyone's got the flags out, you know, by the end there was... 40,000 people. It was, it was unbelievable. It was everything we hoped it would be. Do you feel a little bit of pressure, though, when, when uh, you might have people in the audience that are there to critique you, so to speak? Yeah, I mm -hmm. guess, because it's such a big festival and everyone covers it, and it, it does, you know, I had, like, DJs coming up to me, like, just saying, you are going to kill it today, aren't you? <laughs> you know, just because it is that important, it can make or break a band. So, yeah, it's a bit of pressure. There's nothing working with Jack and I Flea. He was like the only producer that really coded us around, courted us and wanted to do it. And mm. uh, all the other names that came up were just not, didn't really inspire us. And even when uh, tensions seemed to rise, when, you know, the pressure was on to, to get the album in the can, so to speak, um, Jack and I Flea said, let's play some games like hide and seek. Is that true? It was more than that. One. It was the engineers, our friends. There's like 10 of us. We turned all the lights off, set up two microphones. Who was the champion? Was it John, the engineer? Yeah. Yeah, he hid in a... Um... He's quite a little guy. He like hid on top of a cupboard and covered himself in, in a sheet. I think he took it a bit too seriously. I got, I got busted in four minutes because I wanted to watch the end of the football. <laughs> So Splendour in the Grass today in gorgeous Byron Bay in New South Wales. Um, who are you looking forward to, to play against at Splendour in the Grass? We're not totally sure uh, of the line of who's on who, which days yet, but mm -hmm. we've heard that Block Party are playing. Yep. We respect and love an amazing band. So and then uh, after Splendour in the Grass, you'll be heading towards Japan and what's happening in the next six months for editors? Uh, we go to Japan, as you said, for a couple of days, then we go home for uh, five minutes, then we go, what, oh god, I don't more know, festivals. more festivals, kind of... then we tour the, the States for a month, tour the UK for a month. Uh, yeah, pretty much non-stop, Just... touring everywhere. You've got a clip request. Yeah, we'd, uh, we'd like to see Block Party with the prayer. We love the band and... Uh... It's a good video. Have you met Block Party yet? Yeah, loads of times. I mean, they're the, the band before those that made their record with Jack Knife Lee, so... Oh, of course. Uh, we met them kind of through him in a lot of ways, and uh, yeah, great band. Well, have a good time in Australia. We'll see you again soon.